Greetings from the American Diabetes Association 75th Scientific Sessions, the largest diabetes meeting in the world. I'm Rhonda Anderson, and over the next few days, I'll be sharing new diabetes research as it breaks right here at the Boston Convention and Exhibition Center. Diabetes requires daily self-management, from checking blood glucose, to taking insulin or other medications, to sticking to a diet and exercise plan. We know that formal diabetes education helps people gain the information and skills they need to accomplish all of this. But how do we determine who needs the information and when? Today, the American Diabetes Association, the American Association of Diabetes Educators, and the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics released a joint statement that outlines when, how, and what type of education and support people with diabetes should receive throughout their lifetime. Never before has there been a system for starting and advancing diabetes self-management education. And these referrals are critical. Patients trust their healthcare providers. If patients believe their doctors think diabetes education is important, they too will take it more seriously. It's imperative we can recognize that patients need change, needs change over time. With this statement, the organizations encourage healthcare providers to refer their patients to certified diabetes educators, and other trained staff for education and support at four critical life stages. The first is at diagnosis. Too many people miss out on diabetes educations when they're newly diagnosed. At that moment, education should focus on safety concerns, coping with the diagnosis, and how to fit self-management into your daily life. There's more to it than here's how to take your insulin. Secondly, the statement suggests patients be referred to diabetes education annually. These yearly assessments would check on the person's treatment goals and self-management needs, review problem-solving skills, make any needed adjustments to, ther to therapy, and address any concerns or questions the patients may have. Thirdly, diabetes education becomes important when new complicating factors affect self-management such as new health conditions or physical limitations. As these conditions change or complications arise, patients should be reassessed. And lastly, people with diabetes should receive education and support for major life transitions, such as when a young adult leaves home and becomes responsible for his or her self-care for the very first time. Life transitions and changes in health status would require more personalized information and support focus on the individual's needs. We know that diabetes, diabetes education works. It can help reduce A1C levels. It reduces the onset and or advancement of diabetes complications. It can improve lifestyle behaviors, such as eating a more healthful diet and exercising more frequently, and decrease diabetes-related distress and depression. Diabetes education also lowers costs by reducing hospital admissions and readmissions. With this new guidance, healthcare professionals will have a better understanding of how to deliver this education when people with diabetes need it most. The joint statement is also being published online today in Diabetes Care, The Diabetes Educator, and the Journal of the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics. To view this press release online, please visit the newsroom section of diabetes.org. And for the latest coverage of diabetes news and research from the 75th Scientific Sessions in Boston, please visit diabetes.org slash breaking news and on social media use hashtag 2015 ADA. I'm Rhonda Anderson in Boston.